sometimes we don't recognize some of the human emotions that are present in, especially in the book of Psalms, but in scripture. And so today we are looking at one of those things that I think might be surprising to a lot of people. We're going to look at depression. We're going to look at David's depression and his heartfelt cry to the Father. And we see God's response as he comes alongside us in our brokenness as the redeemer and restorer of all things. I pray this episode blesses you. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, real quick before we get started, I wanted to remind you of a couple of free resources that I pray will bless you. The first is the Christian Daily Women's Bible Study Group on Facebook. That group is becoming a place for community to ask for prayer, to ask questions about the podcast, for me to kind of connect with you throughout the week. And I would invite you to get engaged with that group because it's a way to kind of just take the next step as far as what God might be doing in your life and figuring out the ways that we can hear him more clearly, even together as a community. And then the second is our email that goes out, the newsletter every Monday. That includes journaling prompts to to help you in case you want to use these episodes as your actual devotions or devotional and you want something a little bit extra, a little bit more. The journaling prompts are a really good way to help you process the emotions between your head and your heart, what's going on in your head and getting those into your heart. So both of those are completely free and I pray that those are a blessing to you. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today we are in Psalm chapter 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and my every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. You know, I want to read this again in a different way translation, actually a paraphrase, because I think sometimes it's helpful to hear things from a different perspective or through a different lens. And so I'm going to read this again from the Passion Translation, which is a a paraphrase that really does a, it's not necessarily a word for word translation, it's a concept for concept translation. And I think For study purposes, we would want to use a more concrete translation of the Bible, but for devotional purposes, I think sometimes it's helpful to hear it in a a concept uh, translation. So, again, Psalm chapter 13. And in this version, titles this, Prayer Turns Depression into Delight. For the Pure and Shining One by King David. I'm hurting, Lord. Will you forget me forever? How much longer, Lord? Will you look the other way when I'm in need? How much longer must I cling to this constant grief? I've endured this shaking of my soul. So how much longer will my enemy have the upper hand? It's been long enough. Take a good look at me, God. Answer me. Breathe your life into my spirit. 
bring light to my eyes in this pitch black darkness, or I will sleep the sleep of death. Don't let my enemy proclaim I prevailed over him, for all my adversaries will celebrate when I fall. Lord, I have always trusted in your kindness, so answer me. I will yet celebrate with passion and joy when your salvation lifts me up. I will sing my song of joy to you, the Most High, for in all of this you have strengthened my soul. My enemies say that I have no Savior, but I know that I have one in you. I don't know about you, but for me, that brings light to some very common emotions that I think are very common to the human experience. And this idea that we see in verse 1, where it's talking about God hiding his face. I think this is this idea of, from the human perspective, perhaps God showing an indifference or not paying attention to the hurting and the suffering that we're going through. And I think that is a very common metaphor from the human experience. Regardless if you are a committed believer or not, I think we all have had times in our lives where we're like, okay, God, do you even see what's going on right now? And then in verse two, this question of how long, that question occurs 20 times in the Psalms, usually in connection with these beginning Psalms. A lot of the Psalms are the lament Psalms. We hear this question of how long, waiting in this place of not feeling like God even sees our suffering. We can see here um, that David is depressed. It's a very clear picture of depression. And and I don't know if you're like me, but again, I hate to keep saying that, but there's so many things that I see in the Psalms where I'm like, oh, that's in there. I didn't even know that was in there. Did you know that the Bible talks about depression? It's clear in this section that that's what's going on. And so while David is depressed, he's discouraged and he's desperate. He's um, feeling like God seems far away and just not willing to help him. I think there's two important lessons in this psalm that we can see when we ourselves are in this, this kind of season. The first is that Our prayers are not always answered quickly or in our timing, but God hears them. And so if we're feeling abandoned, um, especially when it's like in times of feeling sick, if we're dealing with a health issue or a financial crisis or severe problems within our family or work or school or church, um, it's very easy to think that God does not hear our prayers or not see what's going on. But really, the reality of what's going on is those are the times that should drive us to our knees where we pray for the Holy Spirit to give us the peace in the midst of those circumstances. We do still have the opportunity to have joy because we know eternally we have this personal relationship with God and we are um, going to be... okay, whether it's on this side of heaven or on the other side of heaven. So that long-term understanding is, is what fuels our joy. But then the peace that comes in the midst of the storm or despite the trial is this role that the Holy Spirit has for us while we're on this earth. And experiencing that is, is what can give us joy in the midst of those things. And then I think the second thing is if we're depending on God through our faith in Jesus, then we can understand that God's delay does not mean that he has abandoned us. Instead, he may be planning something to accomplish something in our lives that we don't even understand. I'll tell you, there was a season in our lives where I very much embodied the emotions that David is going through in Psalm 13. And I've talked about this on the podcast before. Um, We, if you want the whole story, you can go back and listen. Um, We had been in the midst of an international adoption. And at the very end of our process, it was a long process, uh, close to six years and tens of thousands of dollars. And we were at the very end of the process. And 
we were scheduled for our last court date. It was supposed to be on a Friday. And Friday morning, our lawyer went to go pick up our son from the orphanage, and he was gone. And not only was he gone, but the house mother was gone. And what ended up happening, long story short, our son was involved in a scenario where he had been trafficked out of the country to a, to a completely different country. And I remember just literally being on the floor, soaking the carpet with my tears, not understanding what was going on, not understanding where God was in that scenario, not understanding why God had allowed us to get to that place only to have it all fall apart there at the end. And at the time, it messed with my theology, I'll be honest. I did not understand what was going on. And I would pray this very same prayer, like, God, where are you? God, how long is this going to go on? Are you going to forget me forever? Where are you, God? It felt like the enemy had overcome. It felt like the enemy was winning. But I'll tell you what happened. Through that experience, we were able to work with the government of that country and shut down multiple, multiple child trafficking rings. We were able to work with the country to change the way that they did their birth certificates and their death certificates and to investigate corrupt government officials that were being paid off to produce faulty death certificates for children that were being trafficked out of the country. We were able to work with the government organization that shut down an island off the coast that had a private airport that was off the radar that would f literally fly under the radar to get kids in and out of the country. We were able to work with a foreign government to investigate their policies of adoption coming from this country. We were able to restore and return over a hundred children back to their families because we pushed for investigations. Children that were not even in orphanages, some of them were, some, but some of them were just taken from the street, taken from their families. We were able to assist 11 children getting surgery to repair things that were damaged by the people that had taken them. I was able to lean into this role that I have now working in global orphan care from a place of compassion and a heart of a mother that would not have been possible had I not gone through the things I had gone through. And so what I know is that we have a God that redeems and restores all things. All things. Even the things that the enemy tried to use to destroy us. And so when it says in verse 5, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord for he has been good to me. Is that situation 100% resolved? No, it won't be this side of heaven. Because that little boy is not in our home. But the trajectory for generations of children is changed because of it. And I know enough now to know that God is trustworthy. Even when I don't understand, I can trust him. So with that insight, I'm going to read Psalm chapter 13 again. And I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation again, the, the paraphrase. Prayer turns depression into delight. I'm hurting, Lord. Will you forget me forever? How much longer, Lord? Will you look the other way when I'm in need? How much longer must I cling to this constant grief? I've endured this shaking of my soul. So how much longer will my enemy have the upper hand? It's been long enough. Take a good look at me, God, and answer me. 
Breathe your life into my spirit. Bring light to my eyes in this pitch black darkness or I will sleep the sleep of death. Don't let my enemy proclaim I prevailed over him for all my adversaries will celebrate when I fall. Lord, I have always trusted in your kindness. So answer me. I will yet celebrate with passion and joy when your salvation lifts me up. I will sing my joy to you, the most high. For in all of this, you have strengthened my soul. My enemies say that I have no savior, but I know that I have one in you. God, thank you for this example of David. So often we think that we have to clean ourselves up before we come to you or that we have to hide some of these hard and heavy emotions from you. Lord God, help us to recognize that in Psalm 13, as we see David cry out to you in the midst of his depression, that this example is that you long for us to come to you with these hard emotions or these hard thoughts or the things that we don't even want to say out loud with these impossible situations, God, help us to bring them to you. This process of lament that we are walking through when we are learning. Lord, this, this process of a lament doesn't mean that we're okay with what's going on. It doesn't mean that in our surrender, we're giving up. But God, we're giving it over to you. Because our surrender is not about giving up on our circumstances, but it's about giving the weight and the burden of the circumstances over to you. Because you long to be with us, to, to, for us to allow you into that space so that you can give us peace in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the heartache, in, in the midst of the brokenness. God, I thank you that we can trust your unfailing love that our heart can rejoice in your salvation and that we can sing praises to you for how good you are. Even when we don't understand it, even when it's not in our timing, even when we can't see it now, but how you unfold over time, your plan and your purpose as the redeemer and the restorer of all things. God, we thank you for your presence in the midst of some of these hard circumstances. We thank you and praise you in all things. Amen. Hey friends, before you go, I just wanted to fill you in on something. I've gotten a lot of questions recently about what's next. People have gone through the She Hears Bible study and they kind of want to have some direction as far as what to do next. Don't worry, I will be writing more studies. But in the meantime, the goal of the She Hears Bible study was to not only help you to learn how to hear Jesus through the example of the six women in the study, but really for you to have a, a set of tools to use that you can apply to other passages of scripture. So what I have available for you on the resources page of my website is a couple different tools to help you do just that. And depending on your budget, there's lots of options. The first option is just a very simple uh, ESV version book of John Bible journal. And so what that is, is on one side, you have the scripture from the the whole book of John. So on one side, you have the actual scripture verse by verse. And on the other side, you have places to take notes. And so that's a really easy place to continue doing the color method of study. And if you don't have the colors that we have designated in the study, those are available. I think they're just a couple bucks in the, in the resources page as well. But you can continue to use that color method throughout, you know, one chapter or a, a couple verses. It's a really easy way to do that. And they're small. You can kind of tuck it into your bag. The second resource is similar, except it's all four gospels like that. And so that, that one is done by Hosanna Revival and they're just beautiful. Um, I love them, just the aesthetic of them. They make me feel really special when I'm working in them. And so that's all four of the Gospels. And that's a little bit more expensive because you're getting the whole set. And then the third option, and there's two different price points depending on what you're looking for, is we have journaling Bibles. And so there's the hardcover that are beautifully painted and then also the leather bound. And 
what I love about those is when you open them up inside, you will see space in the margins to continue to write. Some people just have a thing about writing in their Bibles. Not me. My Bibles are all marked up. But if you have a thing about writing in your Bibles, this could be a dedicated journaling Bible where you can do the color method and not worry about getting, you know, your study Bible all messed up. And so I pray that those resources bless you. I started putting those in the shop after people started requesting them. And then I realized that I never really told you guys about them unless you private message me. So in case you're looking for what's next, what's more, this is a really good transition after you finish the She Hears Bible study. I pray that it blesses you. Have a good week, friends. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. This podcast is supported by Morgan Stanley. Old school wisdom with a passion for what's possible. That's what you get from the Morgan Stanley client experience. You get listening more than talking and a personalized plan built on insights and innovative technology. You get grit, vision, and the creativity to guide you through a changing world. Old school grit, new world ideas. Morgan Stanley. To learn more, visit morganstanley.com slash why us. Investing involves risk. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC.